We are here right now at the Congress Bhavan, the official uh, headquarters of the Congress Party in Kohima, uh, where the AICC national spokesperson, as well as he's also the in charge media coordinator in charge of the Northeast region, Matthew Anthony. He was speaking to media persons where he discussed at length the scam of the electoral bonds the BJP government is doing in the country and how it is affecting everybody, including the state of Nagaland. And he has also mentioned about the freezing of bank accounts of the Congress party and how they are uh, having a tough time at this point to fight the Lok Sabha elections and is all against democracy. According to him, Subung Marin Jamir was also there, the candidate for the Lok Sabha elections from the Congress party. Let's have a look at the press conference. A very good afternoon <coughs> to all of you and thank you once more for your time. Uh, we have here with us our national media coordinator, Mr. Matthew Anthony. He'll be addressing the conference. And we have uh, all the familiar uh, senior party faces led by our president and INC candidate, Sir Suleiman Jamir, and our working president, Sri Krede Tino, and of course, our Captain Zimongbi, our uh, vice president. And uh, I won't take much of the time, and straight away, I hand over the mic to you, sir. Thank you, Yanka. Good afternoon. First of all, congratulations to our PCC president for being the candidate. Thank you. And uh, thanks to other colleagues, senior colleagues here, the working president as well as captain here. <clears throat> and thanks to all of you for coming away from faraway places as well as from nearby places for participating in this press conference. Today, what we are going to address to you is few painful things which this BJP government has been doing to all of us. The BJP has lied to 140 crores of Indians when they said that they will eradicate black money. The first cheating was the 15 lakhs black money to be paid back to each one's account. Let's say that you know a lie being told to the people for winning elections. Again, they repeatedly lied and betrayed the people of India with the largest scam, largest engineered scam, which we have seen in the electoral bonds. Before we get into the larger conversations, let's understand what is an electoral bond. They said the donors to the political party should not be known. It should be anonymous so that the donations can come and black money can be eradicated because it can be donated through the right channels by purchasing an electoral bond. Now, after investigations by an award-winning journalist, Poonam Magarwal, one, of, one amongst you should be proud about, you, you people should be proud about it and a lot of other collective journalists who investigated this, identified unique numbers and watermarks, which RBI finance ministry has claimed that it is a security provision, whereas it was a tracking device, which tracked down all the donations. Now, who appoints the SBI chairman? It is the government who appoints the SBI chairman. So who had access to these information? It is the government who had access to these information. So what, what was claimed to be anonymous became exclusive. And the BJP used that with a carrot and stick policy. They gave, they used it as an extortion, like a small company called Future Gaming Hotel Services which has got a revenue of 400 crores, but donated 1,365 crores. You have, we all earn income. You might earn 50,000, you might earn 30,000, some people might earn a lakh of rupees. Will you donate five lakhs of rupees when you earn one lakh of rupees? We are asking simple questions. We are not asking too many complex financial engineered questions where common people cannot understand. Where is the ED? Where is the CBI? Where is the fraud investigation officers? Where is the PMLA clauses, the money laundering clauses added to it? 
we don't even know whether the money has been deposited to SBI in cash. So you have rooted black money into the system, whereas you lied to the people that this is to take away the black money. They have given unforgivable things to the people. They have taken money from pharmaceutical companies. And you know from what kind of pharmaceutical companies? Which produces adulterated cough syrups, adulterated blood pressure tablets. And we see a lot of problem with the COVID vaccine and the COVID medicine called remdesivir. They took money from them, blackmailed them. While BJP got rich, they played with the health of the Indians. They played with the health of the children. Is this fair? Isn't it against any kind of ethics? When I was going to talk about this topic in Nagaland, a lot of people told Nagaland is not concerned about the electoral bonds. But I said we should be concerned because of the simple reason that how many of you are consuming cough syrups? How many of you are consuming blood pressure tablets? How many of you have consumed or your family members have consumed Remdesivir during the COVID times? So this is exactly what we want to bring to you. This is the kind of corruption which BJP has done. Now this is extortion. The second is they take money from companies. Four lakh crores of contracts were given to companies which donated electoral bonds. And who's the largest beneficiary of electoral bonds? BJP. Congress got around a thousand crores plus. BJP got around 9,000 crores plus. Now, we didn't have ED with us. We didn't have CBI with us. We didn't have any other central agencies with us. So the donations which has come to us has come to us, you know, from genuine donations. Whereas, it is BJP who has got rewarded by this, either through extortion, blackmailing, or by giving contracts. This is what we want to bring to the attention of the people. Now you will say how the ordinary people are concerned about it. How many of you pay GST when you go to a hotel, when you go to buy clothes, when you go to do things? Isn't that a tax? How many of you pay excise tax on your fuels? How many of you pay road tax on tolls? All these money is getting diverted and they are taking it out. This is BJP's corruption. This is what we want to do bring across to the people of Nagaland. Now, while we are fighting the election here, we also want to bring to your attention, News Laundry is a journalist <coughs> media company which brought this out. As of today, they have received 15 income tax notices today, totaling to a 55. We stand by you people. We still say that you criticize us when, you, when we do wrong, but we will never come back to you and haunt you. We will never give you fear about your profession. We allow you to practice because during the UPA times, you have seen the journalists asking tougher, tougher questions to Dr. Manmohan Singh on 2G scam, which was not even a scam. Now, can you even ask a question, raise a question to BJP on about all these scams one by one? I would like to bring your attention to what they are doing to suppress the democracy by oppressing the campaign work of the Congress party. The Congress party's accounts have been frozen. They say that, no, we have not paid income tax. Can you tell which political party, national political party in India has to pay income tax? If so, the one party which is sitting with 6,500 crores plus, BJP has paid how much income tax? Our accounts have been frozen. Around 165 crores have been forcefully taken out from our accounts. Notices have been served for 30 years back of assessment. 285 crores of fixed deposits has been stopped from being utilized. How will we manage elections? You know your difficulty to come from Dimapur to here to attend a press conference. You know your difficulty to travel from one city to the other to a press conference. Can you imagine if at all you have to contest an election and to give a competition in a fair playing ground, then where does this money come from? 
why is bjp and modi behaving like putin to suppress the opposition and to have a one sided election by taking and fleecing out all our resources we want the people of nagaland to think we want the people of nagaland to ask these questions to yourself and then cast your votes because do you want a government which oppresses you do you want a government which takes away your rights if today they have taken away the rights of people like a strong opposition party like a congress party arrested chief ministers like an arvind kejriwal and a hemant soren what stops them from taking away your wealth on one fine day because if you are not in agreement with them what stop them from freezing your accounts freezing your profession stopping your activities do you want a government you want to live in fear or do you want to live in your freedom which is given to you by the constitution these are the points which we want to bring across to you we want the media support to help us convey and communicate this to the people of nagaland in the at most regional languages in which they understand so that they cast their vote for the congress party to sir jamir so that we protect your interest we are answerable to you we promise you that we are not using the central agencies against the whims of the people against the rights of the people that's exactly what we want to communicate here we call upon all the medias to support our endeavors bring this gross injustice gross lies blatant lies which is said by bjp to the people of india across to the people of nagaland that's all we have to say and we are open for questions if at all you want to add mm -hmm. anything more we are will be doing a press conference in vokha as well as in dimapur in vokha we will be speaking about the unemployment and related issues which is for the people of nagaland and in um, dimapur we will be speaking about the minorities issues which we are facing across in the northeast as well as bjp's double face towards the minorities so we request all all of you to attend those press conferences also younger will be informing you about the time and venue about it so thanks a lot for coming any questions we are willing to take it thank you how confident is uh, our candidate congress candidate of this election considering the all the state <coughs> the pda government has broken in all the other parties as well yeah that is uh, everybody thinks on that line we have to fight with a 60 opposition less mla but uh, now people are very much aware that those uh, mentated uh, mlas they are not delivering the goods to the people and uh, it is at the same time now the bjp government has uh, totally blamed against the minority and especially it's affecting the christian community so our voters the sensible voters they are wiser enough and we have a great hope that even though the elected members are in the one side they are elected by the voters and we are going to the voters to vote for the congress so definitely congress has a confidence that will win i will also add a point yesterday i was walking through the streets here and i was collecting information from people asking their feedback um about the corruption and all of the things like that so both of us were walking here in these roads and uh, i was amazed to see the cold response from the people especially the youngsters we are tired of this corruption this government is not doing anything they are doing their second term here and uh, despite all the feedback it's outright corruption there are no roads there in many parts of nagaland there is water issue there is electricity issue to whom we are going to address to half of the time suddenly the current goes suddenly it comes water has an issue so the people have lost the hope in the government they say that they are coming through unethical means so they want somebody who is accountable because everybody knows that you can question congress that's the beauty of congress how much ever you say about bjp or any other allies of bjp at some point of time fear will come in oh they will come behind us but with congress the beauty is that even in midnight you can knock at the doors or you can give a ring to the congress leaders and you can shout at them if things are going wrong and you you are very sure about that you're not going to be attacked for that one so that is a confidence why which we are saying that 
people have realized their mistake to a large extent. And in the Lok Sabha elections, we are definitely going to see that witnessing in the polling booth where we are very confident that we will be winning a good number of seats from the Northeast uh, for the Congress party. And Nagaland is one sure winning seat for us. And uh, also, uh, you should be putting the same question to the PDA candidate, <laughs> so not our candidate, because they say something, they do something else. They talk about 400 MPs, but they've frozen the account of the Congress party. They are arresting our alliance partner, CMs. Is it the deeds of a strong, uh, you know, strong party? Is it, a, is it a, uh, I mean, a strong campaign? If they are so confident of winning 400 MPs, why are they doing all this? <clears throat> this is the actions of a very scared uh, government. This is the actions of a very uh, uh, scared uh, party. And uh, you should go and ask them the question. And we are very confident. The party is completely behind our uh, candidate, and uh, we expect a positive yeah. answer. I'll, I'll, I'll just add one single question on that one. Bihar, Maharashtra, Karnataka. BJP has a lot of seats now. And these three states, we are winning superbly with our alliances. Karnataka on our own. Andhra, we'll make a good uh, comeback. Telangana will make good progress. Along with that in Maharashtra, our alliance, and Bihar with our alliance. So where are BJP going to compensate for these losses? They are desperate. The, all the signs from BJP is from a place of desperation, from a place of fear. That is why they are going and oppressing the uh, opposition, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And you remember this, across the world, there is no country in the world where when democracy is force, forcefully oppressed, it has always thrived back. It has always thrived back, yeah. even to the unexpected results of the party who is winning. That is exactly what is going to happen in 2024. Congress is expecting to form the India Alliance government in 2024, but it might, the results might even surprise us from our expectations, it will surpass our expectations because the kind of fear BJP is showing clearly gives us an indication that they have sensed an imminent, unavoidable failure on their face. See, the other day we did a press conference on the guarantees, okay? And the reason why the guarantees are originating is because unemployment, which is at the highest rate, price rise, which is at the highest rate, women insecurity, 31,516 was the registered rape cases in 2022. That is 86 rapes per day. These are the kind of issues which people of India are worried about. Because you look at the LPG price, you look at the day-to-day -day living price, and it is affecting your pockets. Then the scams, one after the other, one after the other. People's money is being taken out left, right, up and down and by creating a psychophancy amongst the people that Modi is something big, whereas he is he's too small to play these tricks on the people and people are coming out and seeing the tricks. That's exactly what is happening. So we are addressing the concerns of people. We are giving guarantee to the farmers on the MSP. We are giving employment, 30 lakhs employment fulfillment immediately after we swearing in. We are giving apprenticeship you know, for youngsters who are not having jobs. We are giving uh, apprenticeships for women who are weak. So we have put out a, so much of guarantees here so that you know, we come out with a good guarantee once we are elected to the power, we ensure that we deliver. And with Congress's guarantees, we have always delivered our promises. Unlike BJP's promises, after the election, they will forget about the promises and they will come up with something other. And they don't care about it because that shows their ingenuineness to the people of India. Whereas we are committed to our guarantees which we deliver Whereas they are committed to the photo ops and all other activities related to that. And after that, they forget about it. They'll come up with something else. So this is exactly what we are saying to the people of India. See, uh, the other day, our uh, prevention cell has also put forward about the five guarantees. Uh, 
that is one for our state. But actually, once, uh, for especially for our state, once a people gives us a mandate to sit in the parliament, now we have uh, 33,000 uh, retired uh, employees are here and uh, they have been affected by the new pension schemes. So mainly we'll fight for their the old pension scheme. We'll try to revert back the old pension scheme. You have been saying about the uh, freezing of the funds. So is the, how does the Congress seize itself fighting the elections when you are seeing so much that it's making the feeling for you to fight the elections and people funds are the it is a very tough time. We have no denial to it. But we have people coming across and supporting across the country uh, because they are aware of the situation. And however, despite the situations, we are a 139 years old party. We fought for the freedom of this country with the power of the people. We never had much of the resources at that point of time also, but we fought with the power of the people. And we still believe in the power of the people to fight this across. And we are very confident that the people of India will support uh, realizing our resource crunch. And even Prime Minister Modi, as well as the entire missionary knows that our monies has to be released because there is no provision to tax a political party. But they want to release it only after the elections. They also know that. So right now, we are figuring out, we are, we are in constant discussions with people, stakeholders, supporters, individual supporters, and see what best we can do. We promise the country that how much ever sacrifices we have to take as leaders, as workers, we will do all what it counts, but we will fight this election for the people of this country. We are not fighting for anybody else. Let's, let's be very clear that this is not an election which we are fighting for the Congress party. Let us be very clear that whatever we are raising the voices against Prime Minister Modi and the BJP's dictatorship regime, it is for the people of this country. It is for the people of Nagaland. It is for the people of each state. We are raising the voice for them. And that is why we are very confident that our resources crunches will not stop us from fighting it because we will fight it in true spirit, will true support, sacrificing all what we have to do to fight this election and win this election for the people. Thank you. God bless you.